All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Live in the wrestling juggernauts group there. Robbie Battle, how you doing tonight? Good, sir. Doing good. Some wrestling talk. Let me go check uh, what's going on there with this thing. Where to chat at, folks? I'm going to be talking uh, some uh, AEW weird shit on Twitter that I saw today there. A couple of days ago, there was like a catfish uh, that was busted or whatever. I don't know if you've seen anything about this, Robbie. No, I didn't uh... I haven't heard anything about that. So basically there's um there was an account uh there it was like a female, right? Uh taking I like I didn't see much of the account. I only seen it after it was suspended or whatever there. I just read like stuff and but it was an account basically with pictures of a girl, right? And it was <laughs> posing as a girl called Chloe. Chloe. <laughs> Chloe. And Chloe posted some sexy pictures, stuff like this. <laughs> and it also happened that Chloe was a big AEW fan, Robbie. There. <laughs> Chloe was a big fan of AEW, and she said that if AEW reached 2 million viewers, that she would show, like, pictures of her naked ass or something. <laughs> was, according to the comments, she was supposed to show booty, she was supposed to show her ass. This is what I heard. It wasn't like completely nude. I don't know there, but I, from what I've read, it's comments about how the account was supposed to show its ass there. If AW got 2 million viewers. So a whole bunch of AW fanboys were praising this account, right? simping this female channel and you know this channel is heroic trying to get a w to two million right they're <laughs> fucking following this praising the oh you're so hot blah 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 and then an account comes out a few days ago and the person you know it, it turns out the whole time it was a catfish, right? <laughs> so the person that the photos were being stolen and used, it's a real girl, right? So she she exposed this. Who's this person taking my, uh, <laughs> my photos, blah, 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 there, you know? And it turned out it was a dude, like... Oh, yeah. An, an AW fanboy, a guy, you know what I mean? The person was exposed or whatever there. Um, so basically, an AW fan posed as a woman, <laughs> said she's going to get naked, says the woman's going to get naked if AW gets a, a lot of views, you know what I mean? So basically going to an extreme fucking weird level to try to get viewership for AEW, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Isn't that like a fucking sickness a bit there? If you're going <laughs> to go to that level. Pretty, like, pretty desperation right there. That's pretty desperate. Really. <laughs> Jeez, it's a hell. Is people are mental. Uh, like um, you know, so 
it shows you that some of these guys are way too fucking hooked on the shit there, you know. And I remember a few months ago, I, I on the live show, I told Jerry about these accounts on Twitter, these female accounts that like, you know, it, they're like hot women who apparently live for AEW and AEW only, like... Me, I was thinking, are they maybe actresses that are hired? <laughs> Let's say maybe they hire a couple girls to go on there, get some followers. Uh, say you show a hot girl claiming she watches the show, like it encourages people to watch, like that sex sales. You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm thinking, are they actresses that are paid to do this? Uh, is it women fucking faking this fake over-the-top love for these corny loser AEW wrestlers there? Or are they, like, faking this so they can get followers off the fans? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, there's at least one of them that it was a catfish, like, you know, maybe others are catfish as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I think. It's, it's usually a guy behind stuff like that, just somebody messing around. It's pretty fucked up there. So we got uh, Alan Costanza just wrote a comment there. WJ is love. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, there. So what do you think of all this shit, Robbie, there? Oh, I'm not surprised about people doing stuff like that or catfishing, and especially on Twitter. Twitter's that's number one spot to get that kind of stuff. Get these girls follow you. you. You don't even know who they are, but it's always a very attractive looking woman. You look like they're models or something. You know, it's some dude trying to catfish or bait somebody. Usually, these people do this to scam. Imagine doing this to try to get viewers for a wrestling company. Like, yeah, you gotta ridiculous. be fucking out there in the head. Fuck. The account was called like Slut and Pancakes or something there. Chloe <laughs> was the fake name, but it's really a different chick, you know what I mean? Yeah. So now this the real girl finds this shit out and then she sees all these fucking weird fucking dudes, these weird AW guys. Fucking obsessed with her photos and fucking see guys with young buck t shirts with anime poster on their wall, fucking jacking off to her photo. She's been <laughs> probably throwing up for days, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's just like AEW, like one, I don't, you know, I watch it. And but what really bugs me is they have like all the wrestlers in the front row and it's like they're cheering for their own shit. It's like, yeah, uh, you know, it's kind of <laughs> uh, acting all crazy over their own stuff. It's like, you know, of course you're going to cheer your own company. It's like, you got these people like, and this is awesome. And then stuff like that. We, well, you just people that work for the company, you know, like, I mean, the fans, the fans act like they work for the company too, like, mm -hmm. and they pretend to cheer and to love a lot of this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you watched Impact. Impact. <laughs> you watched <laughs> Dynamite tonight. Is the same show. It feels the same. Uh, especially with Christian and using pretty much the same music that he used in TNA. I mean, it, it feels just like impact. 
and you're supposed to be marking out or whatever because they got that music or mm -hmm. staying as a grown man why would you be marking out for this like <laughs> it's the music he had in tna like <laughs> Who marks out for shit like this at our age? There, like virgins, <laughs> uh, hairy <laughs> virgins. So we were gonna go live on the Facebook page, the facebookcom slash wrestling Jesus TV. The page, the wrestling Jesus Facebook page there. We were going to be going live on that, but um, fucking uh, I wasn't able to get Rob in, you know, to do the lot to do the review of uh, Dynamite. So fucking Robbie <laughs> watched fucking Dynamite for an hour and a half and couldn't even get him in. Fuck. So we're going to yeah, talk a little dynamite there, Abby. Uh, it's so going fun. a little... Matches were... Most of the matches were okay, but it just felt like you were saying to me earlier before we came on here, it just feels kind of bland. It, it's not like exciting. It's just like... It's you know, an average match. Then it's... You know, you get a little short match, then a little longer... But there, there's this very bland. It's nothing that really makes you want to watch. It's, you know, it, I thought it was pretty kind of bland tonight. Well, well it was uh, on Wednesday, but when I saw tonight, it's bland. It just felt like a long, boring episode of Impact. Like, yeah. When Impact was a little better. Nowadays, it's like it's. Impact is like a little goofy, fun show. You know what I mean? It's like they, they try to be like a goofy, fun. Like I'm not saying it's fun. Like uh, that uh, I'm enjoying myself watching it. But they're presenting it like it's fun. You know what I mean? They got all their little goofy backstage skits and uh, some kind of like uh, – like some kind of reality Big Brother show kind of thing there that they had like a, I don't know people getting eliminated or something I don't I don't know what it is there but all kind of like goofy stuff you know what I mean? Best thing I, I hate about wrestling right now the modern wrestling is it's like it's not Saturday Night Live or Mad TV I mean these guys aren't comedians. And, and a lot of times the comedy isn't really funny. It, it comes off very lame. <laughs> it's like Impact, it's a bunch of little weird comedy skits. Yeah. Like, and it's like done by amateurs style there and a lot of backstage segments with like simple wrestling matches, you know. Well, yeah. AEW, it kind of feels like that tonight. The match, it well, uh, last this past week, a lot of like little simple step by step match that say just go to this, do that, tag in, do the move, tag out, <laughs> go to the finish, and it's done. Let's see. It was yeah, that a five match like that with the young bucks at the end. We got Mark Kellner Harms. All right. Yeah, they uh that that boxer guy is I don't understand. They're building him up to be some kind of unbeatable force or something. Uh, a go go guy to Anthony you know, go -Go, yeah. does that punch in the stomach that he does over and over. It's just I don't really understand. Like the guy hasn't done one wrestling move. It's just all he does is he comes in and punches somebody in the stomach. And that's it. And he's fighting it's Cody. Like the guy appears on three, four episodes. All he does is punch a guy in the stomach. Man. He's a complete unknown, the guy. And now he's in one of the marquee match. Against one of the top stars there. You'd, you'd think this guy was like Ellie Gonti or something back in WCW days. 
I mean, hell, he doesn't wrestle any. It's just just big punch in the stomach. Well, he did do a little different. He did this little thing where he threw the guy in the air and punched a him. Pop up punch, kind of. Yeah. yeah. That was, I guess he showed he could do something a little different, but uh, I just I don't get it. Greetings from Manitoba, says Mark. It's a pretty freaking hot day around here, Mark. How about you? Is it hot over there today? There it was a hot and humid day here in Ontario, right? Yeah, it was hot here. It was 87 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not oh, sure what I did Celsius, but I said got pretty warm today. So let's go step by step with these freaking matches there. <laughs> We uh, we started off with what? Um, we had um, what was the first match? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> fuck, where's my notes? Did I fucking troll them out already? <laughs> Christian versus Mike Sidey. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike. You go ahead and give them your thoughts on this shit, Robbie. There, me, I. Gave my thoughts on the page there. I'm going to be giving some thoughts on here. There it was raining, said Mark. Raining oh. in Manitoba. The sky was gray here, too, but it didn't rain there. It was fucking raining fire, how fucking hot it was. Yeah, it was sunny here, humid. I thought the good Lord was coming back, Robbie. It was so hot out there. <laughs> <laughs> I show you what I'm drinking, Robbie. There. What the fuck are you drinking, WJ? <laughs> Had to cool down with a big froster, oh, Robbie. Nice froster. That's like a <laughs> Froster. <laughs> yeah, that first match, the Matt Sadell and uh, Christian, and that was okay. I mean it. For, for what it was, you know, he Matt Seidel wasn't as good as what he did in the match, but was it too comp? I thought it was too competitive. There. Yeah, I think Christian coming in as a supposed huge, huge uh, star. Uh, yeah, as so like, yeah, like, with it, I, I think he should like fucking wipe the floor with the the Matt Seidel there. This company needs to start making money and quit making friends or whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? They're not doing Christian any favors with this by putting him in a bland match with a jobber and making it last 20 minutes. And then they, they get their ass kicked, both men anyway, right? Christian got his ass kicked by Team Taz at the end there. <laughs> Why not fucking have just a short match? You have Christian beat him fast and impressively in five minutes. Then he does a promo or something. Right? Christian yeah. can talk. Have him beat him fast, cut a promo uh, instead of just the usual fucking group attack every fucking 10 minutes on the show there. Yeah, it's that's <laughs> so, go ahead. I'm gonna roll a joint and so I can calm down, Robbie. I'm getting pissed right. here there with this. this well, it's just like pretty much every match has to be 15 or two. yeah, you get the odd ones that are short, but most of the matches they make too long. It's like every every match, even if it's somebody that's a jobber, they got to give them 10 to 15 minutes. It's like uh, you should be squatching somebody like that. Like, you know, I, I don't understand why they do that. Not every match. Yes, to try to make it look like it's better wrestling, or but uh, uh, just it's unbelievable. Like, if you're fighting somebody that's like a jobber and you're, it takes you 20 minutes to beat them. That's the, that's the thing, Robbie. This, this so called better wrestling doesn't sell. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's true. You know who does better wrestling? NXT. They have the best in-ring wrestling, probably, for that nerdy type of in-ring work there. 
with that kind of style there, they probably have the best in ring work like that, and they have the least amount of viewership. Um, that should tell sure. you the truth about what fucking sales is. <laughs> you gotta have you gotta have a reason to want to watch the matches. You gotta build up yeah. storylines. Gotta give character to the wrestlers. I mean, they, the wrestlers all seem very bland nowadays. It's like they don't really have anything original to them. And then when they try, when they try to show something, it just it comes off like they're trying too hard. It's it's just they don't have that natural gift to them. Oh man, it's just you can tell. I mean, the Young Bucks is number one example. They're trying to be heels, and they're just they're horrible. It's just I don't know, but I think they're funny when they're not. It's cringe. Did you see when when Nick Jackson when he first walks to the ring and he has? something weird on his head or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it just looks so fucking silly, let's say, and they're like, they're yeah, supposed they, to be the main event for the night, let's say. Yeah, it was, they annoy me. Both of them do. I, that, the po posing they do, and that annoys me. So then Christian wins the match after like fucking 50 minutes there. And to me, it just like they're having a, a quote unquote competitive match there. But it's like, to me, it's like I get it. You want to give your buddy a match there, there, but like it's boring. It's like, like, I don't know. To me, it just felt too long for. And I, I like Matt Seidel, he's past his prime there. Like, I don't know where they're going with this. To me, it just makes for boring television. But after Christian wins, then Team Taz came out. Hey, eh, Robbie, I watched this match yesterday. I had to watch this in two, two shots because I was falling asleep after watching this Christian match yesterday. <laughs> So I pretty much forgot what happened with Sting there or with uh, Team Taz. They came out and beat them all up or whatever there. Yeah, um, Adam Page came out there and tried to help him out, and he ended up getting beat up. Um, what were you saying to me about Adam Page before there? Oh, they they're, they're, they've just they've made him look. You know, at one time they were building him up like he was going to be a number one contender for Kenny Omega. And then all of a sudden they just had him job out. Like he's not even taking, to me, I don't even take him. I like Adam Page, but I can't take him seriously to where they're booking him. It's, it's like, damn, you guys are boring him. Just, you know, he was supposed to be one of your biggest stars, and now he can't win a match. He's. <laughs> Like he's and he's and he's acting goofy. That, that goofy shit that he's doing. Like what? what the <laughs> isn't he the guy that's in a, Isn't he in the big quote unquote storyline arc with uh, a big majestic long term storytelling program with Kenny Omega? Yes, what I was thinking. Adam Page is the one that's gonna de dethrone the Lion King, or he's. Maybe Adam Page is the Lion King. I don't know. There, for some reason, that's there's that's fans. Awesome. They keep talking about Lion King on Twitter. There. I mean, who, who, who can you see Kenny Omega? Who do you really want to see Kenny Omega wrestle? There's not really a whole lot of people I want to see him get in the ring with. Adam Page is one of the few people that. I'd like to see him wrestle. Like if I, like they, they're a good fit for a match. Yeah. But if Adam Page wins, is he ready to be world champ right now? You think? Uh, I don't know. That's that's a good one because I I mean I the way they book him is shitty and he this goofy depressed act and then happy act that he's drinking all the time. 
It'd be different if he was like a badass redneck or something or or some kind of something a little bit more intimidating, but I, I don't understand this whole goofy out with the dark order. Yeah, that's an yeah, idea. Whatever that is, like Dark Order, it's like it's not even a serious thing. It's just lame, cringy comedy wrestling. It's not even funny. It's like are they said, Unless they plan on keeping the belt on Omega for like another two years and they build up slowly Adam Page. I don't know there. But. Yeah, I don't I hope he doesn't keep the title that damn long. <laughs> like if he was the first fucking when the, sh the, the show started, he, he fought a big match against Jericho for the belt. They could have kept him at least presented like an upper mid Carter that he has a big match like every uh, week or every say couple of weeks or something there. They could have kept him as a serious competitor that's, uh, you know, why does he have to be with the job squad guys? Like, how does this help <laughs> his character to look no, like the bar? Destroys on the shit. Shitty Why does he have to be with anybody? Like they had him say in the show, I've been part of teams and groups. Then he was stuck with the Matt Hardy stuff. And now he's, he, they did a thing that they wanted him to join Dark Order. And he said, no, remember that? Yeah. He, I mean, it's like he said, no, but he, but he's what? in it anyways. He's like, still in it. Like, yeah. What the fuck? Like, That's the thing, right? It don't make any sense. Their booking doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, the, you got guys turning heel one week and then one week they're baby face. It's like, you don't even know who to pull for. It's like, well, one week they're booing these people and then next week they're good guys. So I don't know who the hell am I supposed to follow, you know? I can't I can't suspend the disbelief because of the booking. It's just garbage. That's that's the main problem is they don't there's no logic or meaning behind what they do. It's just they just shoot shit at the site, like shooting shit at a board and seeing if it'll stick. Pretty much what they're doing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just to me, Kenny Omega. There's not too many other people that he can wrestle that I'm really excited to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eddie Kingston <laughs> against Omega can be a match there. Yeah. Not Eddie Kingston to win though. There, but I don't know if I. Them, they could have Kenny wrestle anyone, and the fans will react like it's big there, but. Unless they do like Kenny Omega versus Sting, I don't know. Like, yeah, Sting's too old. He can't carry a match like that. He can't have a real match, but like, he could. He could do. Either, like, like, I don't know what's the biggest match they could do. Like, he's already wrestled Jarek, or maybe Kenny and Cody Rhodes. I guess. Yeah, well, I know that Jericho said he'd like to wrestle Sting, so I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't happen. We could be. They're going to do, say, say, Kenny against Christian, Kenny possibly against the big show. Uh, we have there. <laughs> I don't yeah. know who else is big that how they can present a big match. There's no, not that many guys that they can present <laughs> as a big match, like a real one, you know. They got Miro, but he's a TNT champion. They got Brian Cage. Do you think yeah. that's a good match or? Mm. It'd be an odd match. It'd be awkward. Well, it doesn't look right. The two yeah. are be kind of an uh, unorthodox wrestling match because of their styles. I, mean, I think Brian, the best wrestler they could put him in a feud with that would make sense if they were trying to make things make sense would be Adam Page. But they're you know they're not gonna. Obviously, they're doing something different with Kenny. I don't know. 
It'll take a while then before Paige could fight, and uh, unless like then like they just do a fucking number one contender, and then Adam Page just randomly wins and fights Kenny a week later, and then the fans, oh my god, the arc is coming true, like. Uh, they just haven't like, talked to each other in two years, and now he's fighting him next week out of nowhere. The big long-term storytelling is coming true, you know, like, <laughs> what's the long-term story? Like, Hogan and Savage, let's say, you know, the storyline started, and then it built up all fucking year, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, These were like, long-term stories, like they were actually in the story the whole fucking year, and the storyline was building up each week, and uh, it progressed for a year, and then it exploded at WrestleMania, you know what I mean? Back yeah, in the day, right. that was a long-term storytelling. You know? That's the this thing, is, yeah. They have a match, or they're in a team, they break, they lose. He loses a match, and then they're completely non, they're not in the story together, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Long-term storytelling, it's just Adam Page hanging out with jobbers. Where's this, the long-term story? Like, they had a match last year, like, they were in the team, there, there's no long-term story there. Like, you and I did something two years ago, and now we're going to talk about it and have a new match. Oh, my God, this is incredible long-term booking. Yeah. Like, in the world of Dave Meltzer, there's this thing they call a callback, like, Oh, in the match in Japan, they did this move, and then they did the move again, but this time he reversed it. Oh, my God. Such incredible storytelling. <laughs> see, that's how they act, you see? Yeah, that's it. I just, I don't know. I mean, I, that's just like this tag team deal, right? They had the Young Bucks versus the Varsity Blondes, and then when they lose... Automatically, John Moxley and and uh, what's his name, King Eddie Kingston, move up to number one contender. Like, goofy, like you know, I don't know how. Many so this is very next level booking, long term storytelling. Yeah. Guy randomly fight attacks another guy, and out of nowhere. Oh, we just heard from Tony Khan. They're having a match next week. Next week on Dynamite. Oh, my God. A mid-carter from WWE against an indie guy that people really don't care about, but you only pretend to because he's an AEW. Oh, my God. I can't wait for this. And it's next week, Tony said. Oh, my God. This is awesome. So Moxley and King Stan, they come out, and then um, the, the Acclaim come out, and one of them cuts a promo and completely buries the two of them kind of deal in the promo. Like, he kind of made fun of Eddie King Stan there, the way he dresses, and uh, that he looks like a jobber and stuff, you know? He made fun of uh, Dean Ambrose. I forget what he said there, but it's something about the uh, set oral sessions. His uh, why like that about his wife? Let's say yeah. like it's big not shot. Just why? Like usually that's something that like The Rock would say to a heel, right? And then. The heel pretends to react to that, right? And the crowd laughs, you know what I mean? But this is like the heel fucking young mid lower mid Carter who doesn't even matter yet, let's say. A young heel fucking burying one of your top stars, let's say, and they both look like goofs getting put down by this young kid, let's say. Sure. 
the like the crowd was reacting like they were getting fucking slammed at a rap contest. Let's say. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't like they 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 lose the match. You know, they've been losing the matches here pretty much every week at a claim, but they always, like you say, they they'll cut down on the big star. This is they buried easy. him. They buried the way the uh, <laughs> with the way he looked at E. Kingston. I start laughing at Kingston, and when he <laughs> said that. The, like what he said about <laughs> Dean Ambrose's wife and oral yeah. section, and then that shows the face of Dean Ambrose. I was laughing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not supposed to laugh at the face, me, when I'm watching it. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Usually you're supposed to laugh at a heel. The heel is the guy get, that gets. So that looks like a goof. Let's say not your tops, one of your top star. See, but yeah, that, uh, what did you think of this match there? Yeah, it was, it was okay. It wasn't bad. It, it was an okay. It was a wrestling match, right? Yeah. The basic right it was okay. I think. I think like Eddie Kingston is a bit funny. Him like. Uh, when Eddie Kingston, he, he, he started out in AW and the fans were saying he's the best talker in the business and one of the best heels of all time. Who's that? Right. If, if, like the AW fans, they were saying they were like overrating Eddie Kingston at the beginning. You remember that there? Yeah, I mean he's okay, but he is. Like, a, and he they is were saying, thing. they were saying, put the belt on him. He's oh, the, the yeah. best talker in the business. One of the best heels of all time. Best heel currently. Blah blah blah. So when you hear fucking claims like that, of course, see. But that's when the AEW fans do that. Then it puts Eddie Kingston in a bad position because then people are like, well, no, he's not the greatest of all time at anything. He's just an, an indie guy bum, you're going to say, because they fucking present it like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But in reality, like once that is all out of the way there, I think Eddie Kingston, he's, a, he's not a formidable wrestler. He's a decent talker. He certainly doesn't have the look. You know what I mean? I can't, I couldn't take him as a real star, but like, he's a funny guy a bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? He has character, you know? Yeah, I mean, they'd put him, I don't want to say comedy wrestler, but kind of in a way. Yeah. He'd be a mid card or somewhere like that. So he does a couple things in the match. Sometimes it's a little funny the way he, yeah. he is, you know what I mean? And I think it, it kind of looks okay, him and Moxley together, right? I, I guess. Yeah. It looks better than other shit on the show, you know? They have a little bit of chemistry together, so, I mean, that, it works. Like, you know, like sometimes you can tell sure. when tag teams are just thrown together and they don't really work well together or gel. I'm like watching Moxley in the ring. He kind of looks like he's just going through the motions. Do you I notice know. that? Yeah. It's like he's not putting any effort into this there in this match. Like, he's moving slow, just... Giving a slow, some slow looking kicks and just looks like he's not putting in big effort, you know what I mean? Phoning it in or whatever. Like this match was okay. There was a couple of okay look. It was like a normal wrestling match there. So. Yeah, he ain't. He, he, he wasn't uh, talking about Dean Ambrose. He hasn't looked that great the last few weeks. He, I've noticed that. He's, 
that energy. He he ain't wrestling like he did when he first came in. He, it's kind of mellowed out a little. Is he already unhappy in the you or is it, I don't think is he's the unhappy. He's just, uh, paradise or? I think he's just probably got comfortable. I mean, I mean, hell, it, there ain't so much he can do there unless he's going to – you know, he likes to do those brutal – those uh, what they call blood matches and stuff. But he likes to do that kind of stuff. He, he, he started off in CZW. So, I mean, that's all they do over there is the hardcore wrestling. I watched that uh, Nick Gage. Um, what was it? Um, Dark so Side. Is this, this Nick Gage stuff. Is this a, a CZW match that's going to happen? Or? It, was a, it was just a behind the thing on them, like a story about Nick Gage. He's a CCW wrestler. He ended up going to prison for robbing a bank. Then he, then he went back because he broke his probation. <laughs> he, he's crazy, man. They, they do those damn death matches and where they got light bulbs and all kind of shit. Pizza cutter. They showed him and Dean Ambrose in the match and he took the pizza cutter and cut Dean Ambrose's mouth open one time. We got a Fiz Hussein in the chat. What's up? What's up, Hafiz? I saw he he mentioned uh, us both. What's up, WJ and Robbie? And, I, and then we had the uh, Page and Sky cutting the promo. Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Oh yeah. And then <laughs> Sting and Darby Allen came out and they attacked them or whatever. Yeah, they're going to run over them. That pay-per-view, that's going to be a squash match. Oh. Two, just two random guys thrown together. <laughs> two, two young guys randomly chose in to take a, a loss to Sting. You know what I mean? <laughs> they just have, like, they just have, like, uh, Say two, three weeks of fake fucking obvious cheap <laughs> throwaway build up. Yeah. Just take the loss, the sting, and go home. That's it. Yep. Random guys. And Scorpio Sky, you were talking to me about how it's weird. They just turned him heel out of nowhere. Yeah. They built him up as a baby face, had him wrestle one of the best wrestlers, Chris Jericho, and give them one hell of a match, and then all of a sudden, okay, we're just going to turn you hill if after you just got people behind you. We're, and it's just, they do stuff like this. We all turn like people. Their, their fans wanted him to be world champ. Remember that last yeah. year on Twitter? They were writing they wanted him to win the world title and stuff. So yeah. when fans are saying this, you take Scorpio Sky and you make him wrestle on the show and cut promos for storylines. You don't just fucking put him on TV once every six months and then he's he wins a Brass Rings match, gets beat by fucking Darby Allin, then he turns heel out of nowhere. Then he's just going to get beat by a 60-year-old man. And yep. then what? Like, why didn't they use him as a star? Now he's he wants to fight a 60-year-old man. I don't know if he could be a star, but, like, their fans were saying he was becoming over, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's yeah. getting over. And, uh, I think he could have been. I think he has the talent to be good. I don't yeah, know he, if he would be good. He could have been the guy to win the TNT title, right? They Make could have went with him to win that belt, but they didn't. Yeah, they could have done something with them better than what they're doing. But that's what I say. They, they mishandle a lot of – they have talent, but they misbook them. They, that's the problem. Yeah, you know, book <laughs> Had the cat on the computer there. 
But um, like they could have went with him, and now like Darby Allen, you know, there was the the claim that he was over, and there's the obvious. See the they think that he's over putting him in the main event and stuff. But like I'm seeing some fans starting to complain about Darby Allen recently on Twitter, you know. Well they they did take the title off of him, so I mean they kinda <laughs> demoted him a little. I mean he's no yeah. longer champion, so and I don't know if Rusev was the best one for that position uh, either. Heck no. I don't understand that. I, there's so many other ones they could have went with besides him. But I guess they want to build him. I mean, they screwed up his character. I, uh, I really wish that he would have kept the same kind of character. I know they couldn't have used the same name, but or, I don't know. If Lana goes to AEW, maybe he has a fighting chance there. Maybe yeah. AEW will give him the belt. But as uh, like you heard on this promo tonight, he's not really that good. Uh, but no. We'll get to that after there. Um, in the third match, Hikaru Shida defeated Rebel. Um. She hasn't wrestled that much Rebel there on on Dynamite. Uh, Mikaru Shida, she I like her, but I don't know if she does a good job as champ. You know what I mean? She can't really <laughs> talk. Uh, no presence. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She looks her. like a friendly girl. She's a cute yeah. girl, you know, but like. No presence to be champ. Let's see. I think she's had the belt for a long enough time yeah. there. I think they get ready to put that title on Britt Baker. Uh, if, if they don't fucking pull the switch on uh, Britt Baker now, then fucking I really don't know what they're doing yeah. here. But. So Hikaru Chida defeated Rebel in a pretty simple uh, throwaway match there. It's okay, match. No, no botch is there. Yeah, a short match. It was, it was okay. It wasn't the best, but. And then you had Orange Cassidy, Kenny Omega, and Don Callis. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much in the comedy skit there. Yeah. Cringe. Oh. Pretty much uh, comedy <laughs> comedy skit backstage, let's say. Yeah. He's just not funny. He he tries. He really does, but he just the yeah, Kenny Omega tries, but just I don't know. I'm not impressed. <laughs> A lot of people say he's the best thing going, but I just, I don't know. He doesn't do nothing for me. I, I tried to be open-minded with him, but I just, I don't really see much in him. What do you think about Kenny Omega, WJ? What's your views on Kenny? Well, <clears throat> me, I like heels more, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of like him more as a heel than whatever the fuck he was supposed to be until this <laughs> point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's Kenny Omega, a star from Japan, but he was just fucking bland as fuck. Yeah. According to Dave Meltzer, there was all kind of great shit and great storytelling happening. But when I watch, it was just random stuff. Uh, Kenny getting beat up by Pac, Kenny getting beat up by Moxley, Kenny getting beat by the Young Bucks, and then at some point he's the cleaner now and he's become a comedian kind of deal. So, yeah, I, I guess it's a little. Well, 
like I said, it's it feels like I'm watching like uh, like some kind of third rate comedy. You know what I mean? Like if they're third, they're like third rate uh, gang. Like uh, it's like they're a, like a gangster group in the B movie or something. You know what I mean? Like they're a, a, a guys from like a fucking low level TV show kind of deal, you know what I mean? Like they're the bad guys on the show. It's kind of like that, the vibe, you know? Yeah. Like a little gang of goofy bad guys there, Omega and Callis, you know? Yeah, I think Callis is actually okay. I mean, I, well, I, I kind of like Don Callis yeah. as a talker, you know what I mean? He's funny, I think, you know? Yeah, he's actually okay what he does. I just uh, I just can't get into Kenny. I try. Sorry, but it, it's hard to see Kenny as a legit wrestling champ. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't buy him as a real star, like... Yeah, he, he's okay to be a star on the indie scene, I guess. He's a a big uh, enough guy with blonde hair. Uh, you know, he looks like he could be a, a champ there in an indie fan. But I don't know if, like, for example, this act, it's a, it wouldn't be good enough to be on Raw, for example. Like, I know Raw is shitty, yeah, but, yeah. like, the champ has to be presented as a as a serious champ. Like Bobby Lashley doesn't go there and do a bunch of goofy sketches like Kenny is doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I like some of their stuff there with Don Callis and Kenny. Sometimes I'll I don't laugh like if it's hilarious, but it's like. It's, I feel like when I watch, I'm like, fuck, this is so fucking goofy, you know what I mean? Fucking cheesy, you know what? I mean? Like that. But, like, it, I don't take it like it fucking, like it's serious wrestling. It's not fucking big time wrestling, this. Yeah, that's, that's what's it's like. It's like if the Fed would be like a... a, a a parody fed and Kenny yeah. are like the 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 comedian bad guys on the show. You know what I mean? He's like the goofy champion. If if it was like a TV show parody kind of deal, you know? Yep, but that's the problem. There's no nothing serious anymore. It's all just I don't know, like a parody. Like everything's a parody of itself. And wrestling. I'm smoking a lot of dope tonight, Robbie. My words might not be the best, but I'm glad you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> like I find some of the Don Callis and Kenny stuff like a little funny if it's like supposed to be a fucking bad sketch comedy, you see? Like <laughs> like last week. When Don Callis comes out, uh, hey, you paid by the hour, boy! And then Kenny comes out with the belt from behind, like, it's like so fucking goofy that it's funny, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not seeing this as a serious wrestling angle. And I'm like, oh shit, Pac and Orange Cassidy and. Kenny Omega, this is the big league. This is a serious world title match, right? But if you would think of it as a fucking goofy sketch comedy joke, well, then it's a little funny. Right? The way he goofy comes in like a goof and hits Pac and it looks so damn goofy and fake. You see? <laughs> It looks so bad that it comes out funny, like watching a Godzilla movie, you know what I mean? But it's almost like that, like if it's a parody of a wrestling show and they're just goofing around, you know? But, yeah. uh, 
And then we had the Inner Circle promo. We First, we had uh, the Pinnacle at a restaurant. That was stupid, yeah. The other one was holding a knife during the whole promo. Was that supposed to be cool, the knife or whatever there? And then the busting of the glass. Uh, oh, and that was so bad, obvious, fake, bad acting there. Uh, the other one acting like he's a, a mafia guy in the restaurant there. Uh, you know, Warlord. Dillinger, the bum jobber there. Yeah. Grabbing the waiter for his drink or whatever, putting the waiter in the headlock. <laughs> Fucking Ty Dillinger isn't even big or anything. I don't like. If he grab me in the restaurant, I'd show him a thing or two, Rob. <laughs> He's not even intimidating, is what I mean. He's not believable, him. Like he'd be grabbing guys in restaurant by the trunk. But then the, the inner circle responded and they said that they were going to accept the challenge that the inner circle will disband. If they disband, it's okay. The pinnacle is already the same fucking group. It's the same fucking <laughs> thing. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much true because a lot of the people were in the inner circle. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's like Jericho and MJF are the similar guys. Mm -hmm. They have a tag team. They both have a big bland guy in it and an extra guy. Yeah, you're right. That That's true. They're pretty much the same kind of fashion. They fucking setting the group. Just change the person. You know what I mean? Uh, I kind of wonder if that's what's going to happen. They're going to lose at the pay per view and then disband. And like the guy and uh, Ty Dillinger are different, Sammy Guevara. But like he even, like Sammy Guevara is the Spanish god, they call him. And the other day, MJF called Ty Dillinger the Canadian god. You know what I mean? So it's the same fucking group. Like, how can people not see that they just, it's like taking the four horsemen and just making another identical group. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, you take a guy, a blonde guy that looks like Flair, another <laughs> guy that's like short, pudgy guy like Arn Anderson and a, a different wrestler, and you make a, the same fucking stable, basically. And this is the same stable. Pinnacle is the same fucking group. Like. And then yeah. Ash, Serena Deeb defeated Red Velvet. Red yeah. Velvet was uh, when Brandy Rhodes couldn't show up because she got pregnant to wrestle Shaq. Red Velvet came in as Cody's partner, basically, because she looked like his wife. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And I, I, what I mean when Brandy comes back, she she's replaced Brandy because she looks like her a lot, right? Yeah. She was even fucking like, why would this girl even want this? defend Cody Rhodes. It's just they replaced her. his wife with a look alike, basically. So when the real one comes back, what happens to Red Velvet? Are they going to try to change her look a little bit? She, don't, she ain't going to do nothing but lose. She'll be jobbed out. I, I, I don't really care for Brandy Rhodes. I mean, I like to look at her, but as far as re in wrestling, uh, she don't need to be wrestling. <laughs> she shows that Brandy Rhodes has too much power her on television. Yeah, she needs to get off the television. She, she's just not good. I know that, I know that ain't gonna happen, though, because Cody, but 
Like that nightmare <laughs> collective group was pretty retarded television. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They stopped doing it, but that's how bad it was. That's how terrible it was that the company just said, okay, we're going to drop this. Like, <laughs> and the fans were applauding it. Oh, they stopped doing it because we complained. This is great. They're heroes for stopping it. Well, what about the fact that they were putting on some of the most retarded TV out there in the first place, you know? Yep. What did we have next there? Um, and the go go defeated Austin Gunn. Yeah. That's the punching match, yeah. All well, about well, this, Robbie. I'm almost done this Friday night joint here, Robbie. I'm about to quit smoking pot soon in a few days there. <laughs> so what happened in this match? You know, whilst the gun started off with a little bit of offense, but it was uh, he got cut off with the punch in the guts, and, he, and it was like three times in a row he punched him and won the match. Anthony Go Go did it was uh, oh he did do a modification of a punch, kind of like a jump up punch, a little mm -hmm. different. That but he didn't really do any wrestling moves. It was just punches, and he ended up winning. <laughs> Oh, Cody Rhodes. Uh, like, how can they grab a guy that they just finished training? Like, this is one of the guys from Cody Rhodes' school or whatever. It's obvious that it's, like, one of his students. Like, yeah. You know, it's obvious. It's one of the students. It's fucking fake. It's uh, the guy's green. He's not ready to be a wrestler for real yet. You know. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't showed me anything. He just he can punch. That's all. So, I mean, he comes out on dynamite. He rests. He shows up a few weeks. Just punches people in the stomach. That's it. Most of the, the, the stuff I've seen was one punch in the stomach, one, two, three, or, or a punch, and the ref would stop the match or whatever. Yeah, because supposedly all the wrestlers get knocked out. I mean, how many times have you seen people get punched in the stomach in a wrestling match and they still continue? It's just so stupid. You know? I like in every AEW match, most of them... Uh, the punches look fucking fake. They're just running in a choreographed fashion from corner to corner. Once in a while, they'll throw in a fake punch while they fucking just play gymnastics with each other, right? They don't yeah. even put in the attempt to make the punch look real. They don't even, the other guy doesn't even sell that he got punched hardly. It's just an in a quick in between while they run to the, from corner to corner. That's true. They do do that. It's mainly uh, gymnastics and stage dives, and pretty much all it is. Tag team matches all look the same. Everything's like a say stage dives. Off the top turnbuckle. Already, <laughs> it's like watching the circus come to town. I don't know. Like, or does Joe Masters now? That's like when people do the flips and shit. That's, that's pretty much what they do. Olympics. So, um, up next. It was Miro and Lance Archer. Uh, so Miro came out and cut a like a cheap promo, a boring promo. Like, 
like Lana was the promo cutter, you know what I mean? Yeah. And she lost, like, or she's gone now. She's not with him. Him by himself cutting horrible promos, like, I don't know where it's going to fucking lead, like. And then Lance Archer comes out, and he's cutting the boring promo. That's horrible. They got Jake the Snake out there looking like he's ready to fucking uh, be placed in a retirement home. No offense. <laughs> he looks like he can barely walk out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's got COPD. I'm shocked he's still able to come out to the ring. Uh, is, he has a big sickness, or yeah, COPD. That's where he have a hard time breathing. Wow, um, man, why is he out oh, there? Oxygen, or a lot of times when you get COPD, sometimes you have to get put on oxygen. So I don't know if he's on if, they, if he's on oxygen or not. But okay, he, does, he doesn't look physically like he's good to go uh, out yeah. there. Uh, and then in the main event, the Young Bucks versus the Varsity Blondes. Fuck. Yeah, match was okay, but the Young Bucks just annoy me. The match actually was an okay match, but I just I get annoyed by the Young Bucks. Like uh, that spot they did when he was walking on the ropes there. They were yeah. walking like he was walking on the ropes and holding his hand or whatever and walking in a goofy fashion on the top rope. Was that supposed to be a mocking the Undertaker walk? Was that because there was apparently a clip that went viral that this El Fantasmo guy was walking on the ropes and it looked choreographed, people were saying. I don't know if they were mocking that or but like when you see just, it's like they're just goofing off in the ring, you know what I mean? The young bucks. Yeah. Like, is it funny? It's a little weird, you know. It's yeah. it to be a little funny what, what he's doing, but it's like it, it doesn't look like a serious wrestling match, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't find those guys that funny. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then the Young Bucks won, obviously, against these these guys there. And Brian Pillman Jr. Uh, you you like Brian Pillman Jr. Yeah, yeah so I, got, I got nothing against him. I just think it looks weird, like the son of Pillman, but he does like he doesn't have the genetics. You know what I mean? He's like a. He's not like his dad. I mean, he's trying. He's getting better, but he's not. No, he's not as good as his dad. Not by a long shot. I mean. He's not physically, doesn't look like Pillman, you know. Pillman was in better shape and stuff, yeah. taller. Him, he's like short and like a little fat a bit, let's say. Yeah, he he's okay, though. I mean, he just, he ain't his dad. You know, wow. He tries, he, he has the haircut to try to look like him, but the, even like Pillman had better hair. I don't know. It's like, Pillman's just. He, does, he doesn't have this, the genetics of his dad. He looks like him, but. Yeah, Pillman had that had that cult of personality. He don't have that personality in his head. Uh, he had an aura about him in WWE yes. too. He had like an aura. To... He's but, trying uh, to have it. Either. Like in WCW, Pillman was like a pretty boy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Him, the son, he doesn't have that. You know. He doesn't have the star uh, power style of the dad. 
But uh, he got his ass whooped anyway there by the Young Bucks. Yeah, he then King Stan and no uh, and uh, Ambrose came in. They attacked the Young Bucks, and the other one stole his shoes or whatever the expensive Jordan shoes there. Like for the past three, four weeks in the match, it's all about their shoes and like just present regular television there. <laughs> so that's about it, I guess. It was kind of bland the show a bit or what? Well, nothing special. I mean, it was average matches. I thought it wasn't, I didn't like nothing horrible happened, right? But it was just like a bunch of low quality stuff, average to low quality kind of deal. Yeah, it's not what, was the, what was the best match? I guess Young Bucks, or I don't know. Uh, the women's, I would say Serena. Serena Deeb. Yeah, versus uh, Red Velvet. The guys, uh, probably that main event. Yeah, I hate to give Young Bucks credit, but the Young Bucks <laughs> and the Varsity Blondes probably. Moxley and Kingston is maybe the match I enjoyed the most there. I didn't enjoy it. Like, I loved the match, but it, a couple moments made me laugh a little bit. So there was at least that there. But, like, I failed to see really – and. In what reality is this like awesome uh, wrestling? Like, it's not awesome wrestling, it's just average and mediocre. It's not really, it isn't as good as they make it to be. It really is. And I mean, like I said, the only thing I could say good about this week is there wasn't a lot of tag team matches. I don't like when they have like four or five tag team matches. And I think that's why it was a little bit more bearable to watch. Because you only had like, what, well, we had two tag team matches the whole night. So it was more bearable to watch. You, when you put like four or five tag team matches on Dynamite, the tag team matches pretty much look the same. It makes it harder to watch. That's just my opinion. That, I think that's probably why it wasn't so bad. It was more bearable. You have more single matches. Uh, that's just my uh, theory. It's like Kenny Long is booking it or something on tag team matches. <laughs> so they got their pay per view into their when on the 30th. Yeah. In the month. Yeah. So they got another week to fucking try to promote this there. Cassidy, Pac, and Omega, obvious Omega retain. Like, who's, gonna, who's honestly going to pay twenty nine ninety nine to watch Kenny Omega versus Pac versus Damn Orange Cassidy? Yeah, I can't. Oh. Cody and match against the Go Go is just throw away shit. That there. Yeah, Sting, they, I guess Sting, but like I said, Sting against two random guys, like two random guys, they just threw together for a feud. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's a he's a real run over down in that match. Uh, I mean, they might let him him a little bit of a match, but you know they're gonna win. That's Young Bucks against Moxley and Kingston is probably the the biggest match so far on the card. Yeah. I don't know what's going to be the main event. Maybe that should be the main event. Probably oh, Kenny Omega and... Or Moxley and Kingston against Young Bucks. Then Young Bucks can pretend that the, the tag team revolution is a big deal that they main evented the pay-per-view because Omega versus uh, Pac and 
Orange Cassidy is pretty cheap for a world title match, I think, personally. There, according yeah. to AEW fans, Orange Cassidy is super over, but uh, I don't think that matches reality. You know what I mean? No. He may be over in, as far as being goofy and their type of comedy, but he's he's not that type of over. He's he shouldn't put a world title on him. But hopefully they don't. All right. It's, uh, fuck, I can't remember what else. I don't. Pretty much it, I think. We covered. Uh, there's Miro versus Lance Archer. I think it's at the pay per view. Yeah. That too. Uh, Inner Circle versus uh, Pinnacle in the football match or whatever. That person was. That's a personal match. They think they're NWO. That's all it is. They think they're NWO. They're not. <laughs> well, it is. They actually, every faction tries to be like the NWO. It's just it don't, it's not. That's all it is, yeah. <clears throat> Trying to replicate that all the time there. I mean, it was a Jake Hagger, is he's dull, dull to me. You know. Apparently, WWE is going live again there in uh, yeah, I saw that June, start July, July, in Texas. Yeah, concerts are coming back here this summer too. Uh, Motley Crue and some bunch of bands like that going to be playing here. I don't know. I guess the pinnacle and the inner circle, to be honest. It's okay. <clears throat> I'm not saying the groups are bad, but like both groups, like they're pretty fucking similar groups. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I think Jericho, like the group, is, say, it's now that they've been together for a year, you'd say, but like. When it started off, it was pretty generic. The just guys put together, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like a, a historic group. This there, it's just like guys randomly thrown together. But now that they've been together for a long time, it's <clears throat> it's become a thing. But. Like, I'll never think of Inner Circle like it was a big deal, like a DX or whatever, you know? Yeah. Oh. Have you seen uh, the a NWA behind the paywall or whatever? NWA? What's it called? Behind it? I don't know. I haven't seen you haven't seen the end of all the way since it came back there? No, I haven't because you have to pay for it now. Uh, so you haven't heard anything that's going on or anything? No, I haven't. Because it used to be they put it on their YouTube channel, and then they decided to start to go to a streaming platform. So isn't it. that, like, stupid? Like, people yeah. were liking it, right, for a while because it had an old-school feel, and Cornette was on commentary there. Mm -hmm. And then they fucking... Uh, now they're just behind the paywall, right. so, like... It's stupid. Uh, they're not making, I guarantee you they're not making that much money off of doing that. Uh... It would have made more sense just to show each week on YouTube like they were yep, doing yep. or maybe get a little TV deal. Fuck. Yeah, it's the same cheap. Why do put it like that? Like it's with all the free wrestling you can get, like 
You can get WWE fucking uh, AW Impact Ring of Honor on television. Uh, there's all kind of little indie feds too, like on different channels, you can get like uh, sometimes indie companies. And like, why would you pay for NWA when you can get all the other shit for free on cable? Fuck, you know? My biggest argument for not for it. I mean, you know, it didn't make sense to me why they pulled all, and see, they pulled every episode off of their YouTube channel, privated it, and then put it on a streaming platform. So you have to pay to watch all of their shows. It's just stupid. I don't know. Like new, stupid. new Japan, right? It's fucking hailed as as great by Meltzer, and it's built uh, a cult who believes that Meltzer and that, that New Japan is tremendous and amazing, or whatever. Well, uh, you know, so. There's a people might have a reason to pay and to, to pay for this fucking app of New Japan, you know what I mean? Because it has like fucking half the 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 fucking indie fans worshipping it and stuff like this, you know, melt surprises them and stuff. So people might want to pay to watch it because apparently it's a big deal, according to Meltzer, you know. But why would you want to pay for NWA? It's obvious that it's like low-budget stuff, you know what I mean? If it's free and you can watch for free, then all right, I'll watch. Uh, it's cheap low budget but it gives me feel good the old school feeling i'll watch but is it worth paying 10 bucks to watch an episode or whatever then probably not you know uh, i don't think it is i mean when you can get wwe pay-per-views for like you know 4.99 now why would i pay that just to watch an hour of wrestling it's ridiculous. Now, Impact is bringing you guys from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh, so there you go. The, you can see the big heroic stars. They're such big timers in New Japan. It's such a big deal when they go to AEW, but the same guys are wrestling for for TNA in front of 12 people there, so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like that, like if they all, they do a big talent exchange, like everybody has the same wrestlers, why would you care? See? It's all going to be fucking big mix. Every fed's going to look the same or what? Yeah. A double U pay per views aren't worth fifty bucks. Oh so, no. Yeah, it's thirty you think they're twenty nine ninety nine on that BR whatever they BR report or whatever they call bleach report. I think it's twenty nine ninety nine plus tax. There ain't no way to pay that. I tried watching NWA and MLW once. I couldn't get into it. I watched one episode myself of uh, MLW. I like the name Major League Wrestling, you know? Yeah. But that's about all I like when I was watching it. But Maybe I could watch it again and see what it looks like. End of old UA, I watched a few episodes. But. Yeah, they were good when they first started. You know, they, they lost a lot of their talent. So. I liked when it first started, like that Tim Storm and Joe C. Face and stuff. But uh, like after a while, I just forgot it existed there. 
Yes. They don't have the power they had. They lost a lot of their wrestlers during this COVID stuff. So uh, that's about it for the wrestling talk for tonight, Robbie. Yeah, I'm getting tired. My eyes are getting uh, more they closing. <laughs> so you've, uh, you've been doing some TikTok. Have you retired from YouTube officially now? Or? Yeah, I'm done with YouTube. I'm, if I do anything, it'll be on TikTok. Uh, I've been watching a lot of TikTok. But I might do videos on there. Yeah. Watching the, well, watch a few people on YouTube and then usually TikTok. Do some vids on here for the group. Uh, <laughs> the group there. Yeah. And that old juggernaut page filled up. <laughs> I see somebody I, I just it just shows me Facebook user on my end there. Somebody wrote, We want more wrestling talk. <laughs> That's what you're gonna get. Fuck some wrestling talk there. Wrestling. <laughs> so that- <laughs> So that's about it, folks. Y'all have a good night now. Night, everybody. Try to fucking uh, try to do good, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about helping each other out there. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. There we oh, want yes. more. We want more drama talk. What? What's this <laughs> there, Robbie? There, drama talk. <laughs> We're in this for one thing, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Worldwide. I can't remember that. <laughs> oh, all right there. So uh, y'all have a good night there, folks. <laughs> Any final words, Robbie? Uh, peace. <laughs> peace. Yeah. <laughs>